Nancy O is hip hop. www.nancyoradioshow.com. Welcome to Hip Hop Bites, powered by the Nancy O Radio Show, the only place to get the latest opinions and discussions surrounding technology's impact on the hip hop entertainment industry. I am your host, Mr. Shadid, and today's segment will be a public service announcement and an opportunity to look at how you, the music listener, are currently conducting yourself in the wake of today's technology changes. Now, today's topic centers around the question, is hip-hop under surveillance? I'm going to examine law enforcement's usage of hip-hop videos to prosecute and throw the book at rappers. Before I begin, I want you to put your cell phone on mute, turn down the TV, and listen carefully. Next, I want you to notify every artist and producer that you know, and make sure they log on to www.nancyoradioshow.com so that they can listen to this Hip Hop Bite segment on demand. So let's discuss how the law, the police, the boys in blue are extending the long arm of the law to video sharing sites in order to build a case or actually make an arrest based on video footage evidence. Before we discuss the present and future, we have to take a look at the past. This behavior is nothing new. In 1989, for you youngsters, there was a young rap group known as N.W.A. who released the album called Straight Outta Compton. There was a track on the album that caused such a stir that the Federal Bureau of Investigations, that's right, the FBI sent the group a vicious letter stating that the lyrics encouraged, and I quote, violence against and disrespect for the law enforcement officers. Now, if being notified by the FBI wasn't enough, a national police campaign followed where local police departments refused to provide security at scheduled NWA concerts and also set plans and motions to stop certain concerts from actually taking place. In other examples of where uh, hip-hop lyrics were used to make a, uh, a prosecution or a wreck of a certain uh, artist, in the late 90s, Bay Area legend C. Bo was released from prison on the condition that he did not engage in any quote unquote gangster related criminal activities. In 1998, Sebo was arrested and charged with parole violation for a song called Deadly Game. In this song, he raps about shooting a cop in the face to avoid jail. So, the gangster related criminal activities was actually making a rap song which led to him being arrested and charged with parole violation. There were other cases, but let's flash forward to 2010. Dubuque, Iowa rapper and convicted fella Gutter Man was arrested for violating parole for his latest single, Gutter Town. Now, in this video, Gutter Man flashes weapons and drugs, which was determined to be a violation of his parole. Gutter Man is now spending the remainder of his 37-month sentence in jail behind bars. Now, the sad thing is that Gutter Man uh, vehemently denies the fact that the drugs and weapons were actually real. He says they were all props, it was just entertainment, but he's spending 37 months remainder of his original sentence behind bars as a result of a video that you can view on YouTube. You can go to Gutter Man and search for Gutter Town. So do a search on uh, Gutter Man, that's G-U-T-T-A space M-A-N-N and listen to Gutter Town, which is G-U-T-T-A space T-O-W-N and view the video that has him behind bars. Now, the most recent news of hip-hop being under surveillance 
occurs in Fountain Inn, South Carolina, where 10 individuals are facing charges in direct connection with the YouTube video that was posted originally in August 2009. Now, a few weeks after the video was posted, six people were arrested in connection with this video. Police Chief Keith Morton was noted as saying, and I quote, it just never ceases to amaze me that people would video themselves doing something illegal and then post it where people are going to see it. The director and quote unquote stars of the video claimed that the guns were not real, but the cops raised the ante by asking or requesting the suspects to produce the toy guns used in the video, which of course the suspects could not do. In review, of the, the different cases that I presented, as far as NWA, as far as the late 90s with SIBO, as far as Gutterman's case in Iowa, and uh, the group in Fountain in South Carolina, the hip hop industry needs to take a closer look at the videos being produced. In 2005, when YouTube was first released to the public, there was a sense that users could post all types of content. There was a certain a f element of freedom with each video that was released. Now, the world, including law enforcement, including government, is savvy to these tools. You have to understand that what you post can be used against you in a court of law. If you're an artist with a criminal history, you have to be extremely careful as I've illustrated in this segment, your videos can land you back in jail on a parole violation. This has been another Hip Hop Bites segment powered by the Nancy O Radio Show. I am your host, Mr. Shadid. Go digital or go home. Thank you.